Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I'm here with Dr. Vincent Martin, MD. He is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he also happens to be the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Martin. How are you today? Good, Lindsay. I'm doing fine. All right. Well, glad you're here. We have a topic that I don't think is discussed very often in the headache community, and so I'm so glad we're going to talk about it today. Today, we're going to talk about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and its connection to the headache and migraine community. And uh, Dr. Martin happens to see quite a few patients in his clinic that have this disorder, and he's also a published author in this area. So he's a great person to answer these questions for us and talk to us about what this is. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, let's start with a general definition of what hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is. There is more than one type of EDS and um, hypermobile EDS is what we're going to talk about today. Well, hypermobile EDS is a disorder of what we call the connective tissue. Connective tissue make up tendons and ligaments. Mm -hmm. And these disorders are disorders of collagen, which is, which is one of the tissues that make up tendons and ligaments. So what happens with EDS is these that the, the tendons and ligaments are more elastic. They're, they're more likely to stretch. And that leads to a variety of different symptoms in patients that have this disorder. Okay. Um, is all hypermobility indicative of EDS? There's hypermobility mm -hmm. and then there's EDS and it's, there's probably a spectrum. So to diagnose someone with hypermobility, you have to meet something called the Biden criteria. Okay. And that's basically where you can demonstrate on exam that people are more flexible than other people. And one, one of them is if you, if you make a, like a swan with your, with your hand, and you take your thumb. If you can touch your, your thumb to your, your forearm, that's one criteria. And you do it on each side. Each one gets a point. And then you uh, bend your, your, your pinky back. And if that goes back more than 90 degrees, and you can see mine does, right. that gets a point. You do it on the other side. Um, that, that gets a point. And then the other one is, is can, does your wrist or does your elbow hyperextend? You can see in my case, my elbow extends backward like uh -huh. that. And then you do the same thing for the knee. So if the knee bends backward by more than 190 degrees. And then finally, if you keep your knees straight and try to palm the floor with your hands, you can do that. So each one of those gets one point. So, so for most people, the cutoffs vary by age, but for most people that meet that are that are younger, a cutoff of five or more would mean that you're hypermobile. Okay. Now, just because you're hypermobile doesn't mean that you have EDS. So, right. yes, you've got a variety of other things, like uh, you might have uh, recurrent joint dislocations, or you might have uh, hernias that uh, that are a problem, or you might have um, a first degree relative that, that's hypermobile, or there might be other findings on exam that a doctor or healthcare professional can help diagnose to see if you have EDS. So really to make the diagnosis of EDS, you have to see a doctor that, that is familiar with this syndrome. Okay. Um, how common are, is hypermobility and how common is EDS? Well, hypermobility is very common, um, probably occurring in about uh, eight to 10% of women and about one to 5% of men, depending on which, which population you look at. And then there can be certain uh, professions and sport, sporting activities that might favor people with this uh, disorder. Like uh, for example, uh, patients who are, um, are, are in a ballet, or gymnasts are more likely to be hypermobile as well. Um, and certain kind of other activities, like uh, I've seen people who like play some of the strings, like uh, they'll play the, you know, uh, uh, the violin, that they may be able to contort their fingers in various positions that make it, uh, um, make them easier to play that, that particular instrument. So, so it's a very common disorder. Um, now in terms of just a straight um, hypermobile EDS, um, probably, you know, looking at something that's much less common, probably something around one to 5,000. Okay. 
Um, so what are the main symptoms of hypermobile EDS um, that, um, you know, that come along with it? I think you, you named some of them, but. Well, the, the big symptom that happens in EDS would be, would be joint pain and joint dislocations. Right. So a dislocation is where the joint pops out of joint. So in fact, sometimes you have to have it reset back in joint when that, when that actually happens. But, the, but more common than, than that is joint pain. These people often have joint pain in almost every joint in their body, and it probably relates to the fact that the, the ligaments that surround the joint are more lax, so you've got a lot of play in that joint, and it, and it causes pain um, over time as well. They can develop a neck pain, they can develop low back pain. Mm -hmm. um, really, people with EDS ha often have pain all throughout their body, in fact, uh, patients who have fibromyalgia, for example, which is another disorder where they have pain all over their body, um, are much more likely to be diagnosed with EDS than, than, uh, than patients without fibromyalgia. So there may be some relationship with that particular pain disorder as well. Interesting. Um, there are other types of syndromes that people with hypermobile EDS are likely to have. They kind of like go together. Can you tell us what some of those syndromes are? There's a variety of different syndromes. Uh, the big one would be POTS. Mm -hmm. It's called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And that's where when a person stands up, they basically, their heart starts to race. And their heart oftentimes will, the heart rate will be anywhere from 100, I've seen it up to 140, um, every time they stand up. So it's like every time they stand up, it's like they're running a race. Mm -hmm. It completely wiped out when that happened. There's very specific therapies that one would use to, to diagnose and treat that disorder. Um, another one would be mast cell disease. So mast cell disease is where patients develop flushing and they have a lot of allergic reactions. And they might have something called anaphylaxis, which is where they have swelling of their throat um, and their blood pressure can get low. And, and sometimes you don't always find a reason for it. They always assume it's from an, an allergen, but this can occur just as part of this mast cell uh, disease as well. Mm -hmm. they get uh, gastrointestinal symptoms where they get diarrhea. They can get respiratory symptoms where they have wheezing and so forth. So there's a whole constellation of, of symptoms that relate to what we call mast cells. Mast cells are, are immune cells that release a variety of different products that can, that can produce these symptoms. In addition, other disorders, they can get uh, reflux, so they can get a lot of heartburn type mm -hmm. symptoms. They can herniate discs uh, in their back and in their neck. Right. Uh, sometimes the cervical spine in particular um, can, the, the uh, two vertebrae can kind of move on one another. Mm -hmm. And the uh, spine, in some instances, it's extreme instances, it can be unstable. Um, so there's a variety of different syndromes that you can see with the sort. You can get irritable bowel syndrome. You can have asthma type symptoms. We talked about the fibromyalgia. So there's a whole group of, of disorders that, that can occur along with, uh, with EDS. Okay. So let's get down to one of the reasons we chose this topic for the Heads Up podcast. Um, are people with hypermobile EDS more likely than your average person to have migraine? Well, we published one of the first studies on this, and basically what we found was that if patients had EDS, that they were more likely to have um, migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. and if they did have migraines, they were about one and a half to two times more likely to be, have more frequent headaches, and when they also were more likely to be, to be disabled by the headaches as well. And we don't quite understand why there's this link between migraine and EDS, but there is, and it also seems like patients that have aura um, seem to be overrepresented in the group with EDS as well. Um, it may relate to the fact that many patients with EDS have this uh, term called dysautonomia. That's where your autonomic nervous system is abnormal, mm -hmm. and that might predispose both to the symptoms like the POTS, but also uh, predispose to, to migraine as well. Okay. And I believe that there are some other types of headache disorders that people uh, with hypermobile EDS are likely to have too. Can you list some of those? Well, another one that was described is something called new daily persistent headache. That's basically mm -hmm. where you develop a headache one day and it's daily and continuous after that. And then no one really knows what, what the cause might be. But it was found that people who had hypermobility, particularly of the neck, 
uh, we're more likely to that um, to develop that syndrome. Right. Um, you, patients can develop medication overuse headaches or what, what are called rebound headaches. I think we talked about that a few weeks ago. But people who are, who are using pain medications more than a couple of days a week can develop more frequent headaches. Mm -hmm. And because EDS patients have pain not just in their head, but throughout their body, they're oftentimes taking many, many different uh, pain medications. Right. Another uh, thing that we talked about uh, earlier was uh, these headaches due to spinal leaks. So because the connective tissue also is part of the sac around the spinal, the spinal cord and it's fluid filled, they can develop little leaks or tears in that sac, mm -hmm. develop headaches that are what we call orthostatic. They're headaches that are worse when you stand up and better when you lie down. There's different therapies for that, um, something called blood patches and so forth, and we talked about that before as well. Yes. Uh, some patients- That was the yes. podcast on low pressure headache, in case yep, anyone- we did that, that was, that was weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Then they can also get high pressures as well. Um, so the, the, those kind of headaches are different. They're worse when you lean forward, they're worse when you lie down, they're worse when you cough, bear down, and sneeze. And, uh, and that seems to be more common in EDS patients as well. So there's a variety of different headache syndromes that can occur in these, in these patients. And then finally, they can develop what's called cervicogenic headaches. Those are headaches that arise from the cervical spine. Because the spine is hypermobile in those individuals, they, they often develop a lot of neck pain. They also have a characteristic posture where they kind of jut their, their, their chin forward, mm -hmm. and that can put a lot of strain on the muscles in the neck. And I think we talked about the fact that they can herniate discs in their neck, and then in some cases the neck can, the neck can be unstable, um, where the vertebrae, vertebrae uh, slip on one another as well. So there's a, a variety of different reasons um, why uh, these people can develop headaches. Right. So um, this is an important question uh, because we are talking to a group of people who have headache generally, who watch the Heads Up podcast. Um, if someone is out there and what we've said to them resonates with them and if they think um, they have some of these things, what are the steps that they should take to be evaluated? Well, the first thing is to find a physician or healthcare provider that knows how to make the diagnosis. And I will tell you that this is a really fatty uh, uh, diagnosis right now. And by fatty, I mean that it's, it's, it's very in vogue. Right. Um, alert, this has been undiagnosed, undiagnosed for, for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, doctors are now just becoming more savvy at making the diagnosis. But one group of doctors you could go to would be a geneticist. Mm -hmm. So that most of the geneticists now are making this diagnosis uh, routinely. Some of the rheumatologists, the arthritis doctors, uh, could also be, um, could, be, could uh, make the diagnosis. And then there's other doctors like myself who've been doing this for a while that could also uh, make the diagnosis. But for the most part, it's geneticists that make the diagnosis. But you need a whole village to take care of patients with EDS because if they have all these different disorders, so if they've got this POTS where their heart races all the time and they're just totally fatigued because of that, and there's doctors that deal with that, if they've got the mast cell disorder, then there's doctors that deal with that. If they've got uh, joint problems and so forth, they often get referred to orthopedists or other doctor or, or, or rheumatologists that can help them deal with that. There are special physical therapists that we'll refer to because if there's a different type of physical therapy that's used for EDS patients than in non-EDS patients as well. So, so there's a whole group of, of professionals that you need to get together to, to treat them. And then even headache is, is, is managed a little bit different in this group of people. So you have to deal with all their, the, the neck problems they have and the fact that that could be triggering uh, pain up in the head. There could be certain medications that you might um, change the way you administer. Like if we give Botox for migraine, we might avoid the neck injections so that it doesn't cause them to actually you know, uh, hyperextend their neck even more. Um, uh, there could be muscle relaxants that you might want to avoid. You'd want to avoid meds that cause, that cause too much weight gain because if you increase the weight in these people, they can have more joint problems, they can have more dislocations, they can have more, um, you know, more problems with their joints. So, um, and then there's certain meds. I mean, the ones I commonly use in EDS patients are topiramate. I'll often use uh, tricyclic antidepressants or other antidepressants that help with, uh, with pain. We'll often try to get them to limit the number of pain medications that they use to no more than two days per week, if possible. Mm -hmm. Not always possible. 
Um, and then um, if they herniate discs, we might address that. And if, if they have a spinal leak, we would address that. So it really depends on what type of headache disorder they have in terms of how we might manage them. Right. Okay, so to, to review that, probably start off by looking for a geneticist or someone who's really well-versed in EDS uh, if, you, if you think you need to be evaluated for this disorder. And then it might take a whole village to treat you after that if you find out you have it. So is there anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Martin, on this topic of hypermobile EDS? I think in, in some respects that, you know, you hear all these different things. If you think you have it, you, it, kind of, it kind of scares you. I mean, I'm hypermobile myself, um, and I don't have all the aspects of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, although I've had uh, things that have dislocated in my body. So I'm probably somewhere on the spectrum. But in most cases, you can manage and deal with this syndrome. So it's, it doesn't, it's not as, as bleak as it, might, as it might sound. And if you get the appropriate therapy, not only can you help your joint complaints and your chronic pain complaints, but you can also uh, treat your headache disorders um, as well. So I, so I would, I would kind of end the broad, the uh, podcast with, with uh, hope, because I think if, if you get the right treatment, you can, you can see positive results. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us today. And this is Dr. Martin and Dr. Weitzel signing off for this episode of Heads Up. Join us again next week. Good night.